C, right? <laughs> Hope everybody had a very, very happy Independence Day, or as we like to call it, 4th of July. Um, you guys are probably wondering, where the heck have I been? Well, everything's okay. I just need a little bit of a creativity break. Uh, doing these YouTube videos day after day after day, I uh, kind of track of what I want to make. So I didn't take a break for a few days and uh, kind of recharge my juices, if you will. I know I've said that before, but it really does help. Um, today, a couple things I need to do. This morning, I need to go visit my uh, friend Richard and uh, transfer some data back uh, to his computer. Um, he's the one I told you guys the other, uh, about a week ago or so, his computer crashed and uh, I was able to get it up and running again by putting a new hard drive in. And uh, I pretty much spent the last few days in data recovery mode trying to uh, recover as much data as I possibly could off the old hard drive. Luckily, I was able to get about 50% of that backed up. Um, so I'm going to head over there this morning, but before I do, there's something I heard on the news today, and I want to kind of do a, a current event segment uh, on here, especially because this kind of troubled me a little bit. Um, I don't always listen to the news every day just because I, I don't feel it necessary. Um, as depressing as the news can be, it uh, kind of weighs on your mind. But I did decide to go ahead and listen to it this morning, and I was actually listening to the uh, radio. And they were talking about a uh, North Korean test launch that occurred uh, the other day, and kind of made me a little bit concerned. Now, bear in mind that North Korea has been enriching uranium and making and trying to make these different um, missiles and they've been testing them for a long time but up until now they've been abysmally unsuccessful um, they've maybe had one or two that actually took off but they were really short range um, probably could barely hit uh, Japan if they had to well apparently North Korea is uh, up their game I just heard about a launch they did uh, for um, uh, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what they called it, but it was basically a long-range ballistic missile that almost had the capability of going and hitting the tip of Alaska. And not only that, this launch was actually achieved uh, mobily. In other words, it was done uh, at sea, most likely from a ship. That just really scared the heck out of me because up until now, we were sure that North Korea did not have those capabilities. Uh, so I don't know what to think at this point. I'm sure this will probably spark a lot of debate on this video, but it's something that I wanted to get out there because I think at this point, um, Kim Jong-un has been pushing our buttons long enough, and I think that we need to uh, retaliate. I, it's funny, for the longest time I've said, yeah, you know what, they don't have capabilities of hitting us, you know, don't worry about it, but it's getting to the point where they're getting extremely dangerous, and to have a leader like that that is so unpredictable, have the capability of striking um, U.S. soil with a missile, even if it's in a remote area of, La of Alaska that wouldn't do much damage, uh, we need to retaliate because it's going to get to the point where he can make a missile that can actually hit the continental United States, and at that point it's going to be too late, so I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. I think at this point we, uh, we need to have a response, and uh, I don't know exactly what that's going to be. But um, we need to basically tell them that this is not okay. Uh, he, he's too much of a wild card to be left to his own devices, and left to his own devices, it's just not going to be—it's uh, not going to be a good end for anybody. Let's just put it that way. But I just wanted to put that out there because it's something that's kind of been weighing on my mind for a few days. But. On a brighter note, uh, I've been getting a lot of requests and people asking me how uh, Baxter is doing. Baxter is doing very, very well, though I still cannot get him to eat pretty much any dry food. He will eat his treats, and he is eating a lot of the wet food, which is good. Um, but I've tried numerous types of dry food. I tried Imes. I tried the uh, Friskies dry food that LT loved. And then lay, the last one I tried was the Nine Lives Special Protein Formula. Uh, it's a new one that got a Dollar Tree. And that last one is the only one he will eat, and he will only eat a limited amount of it. Um, I basically filled up a 10-ounce uh, bowl, 
and that was about a week ago and that bowl isn't even halfway empty so that just tells me right there that he's taking a few bites of that food at night but um, really isn't doing uh, really isn't eating very much of it and I've tried uh, several other things uh, some of you including my parents mentioned uh, trying to mix the wet and the dry food and I did do that because I noticed that he was trying to do that himself but alas didn't work. Um, I did that the other day and he wouldn't even touch the wet food once the dry food was mixed in with it. So if you guys out there have any uh, any opinions, any um, any options for me, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have finicky cats out there. Um, please, please let me know because I know it's important for him to be getting the nutrients from the dry food as well as the wet food. And uh, I'm just concerned about him uh, being healthy and living a nice long life because I remember uh, my grandmother's cats were the same way. They were not really big fans of dry food. She only fed them wet food. Um, they did live long lives, but towards the end they had a lot of problems, uh, mainly respiratory issues with um asthma they always seem to have allergies going on so i'm here at the thrift store i'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for a few minutes i'm sure we're gonna get into some more interesting things today and i will talk to you guys a little bit later all right tubers well i'm just leaving the thrift store and i did find something kind of interesting something i've wanted um i love my new van but the one thing it does not have is the uconnect feature which basically means it doesn't have bluetooth so i can't connect my phone to uh the car radio so I found the next best thing. This is the Bluetooth 6E multi-port speakerphone. Basically, uh, I've seen this before. I got this for $5. These, I think, sell between $20 and $25 normally, so this is a good deal. It's brand new. This will actually attach to my sun visor, charges via just a 12-volt um, cigarette lighter adapter, and this will actually give me Bluetooth wireless uh, functionality in this car, so this is really nice to have. Um, battery is a 3.7-volt, 750 milliamp hour lithium-ion. It's got a talk time of 15 to 16 hours and standby time about 48 days. So basically, I only have to charge this every once in a while. So very, very grateful to have this, especially for that price. Nothing else at the thrift store, but uh, you never know. I'm not surprised because yesterday, even though they were only open, uh, they were only open until five. They had basically a skeleton crew, so really didn't have a chance to put too much out. So probably check here later on today. Right now, I need to go ahead and um, do my friend here a favor. She needs me to get her some ice. So I'm going to run through Burger King's drive-through, uh, just get her a cup of ice, and uh, maybe get myself something to drink. And we'll see what the rest of the day brings. I will talk to you guys a little All right, later. All right, tubers. I got back home about a half an hour ago. I had some Chinese food for lunch. Very good. Some uh, sweet and sour chicken and some dumplings. Then I heard a truck drive up front. Not even a bell, but I went out to the front. And sure enough, when I went to the front door, this was waiting for me. I believe, actually, I know this is the hard drives I've been waiting for. Now I'm gonna turn this around. I wanna show you guys something because this is not instilling confidence right now. I don't think the person who did this packed it very well. All right, Tubers, we'll, well I'm gonna use my dollar store approved opener here and go ahead and just slice this open and see if we indeed have damage or not. Uh, this be honest, this is the first time in a long time I've had an eBay box come in this damaged. Thank you again, FedEx. And yes, this was done with FedEx. Well, used enough of these little packing peanuts. Uh, here are the hard drives. Well, they look like they're intact, and they did put bubble wrap around them. That's uh, that's a good thing. These should be um, five 640 gig drives and five 750 gigabyte hard drives. Now, I really wish they would have packed this tighter, though. And unfortunately, you could tell that and I'm, I'm really assuming at this point that this damage was caused by FedEx. So I can't imagine this eBay seller has very good feedback. He had one negative feedback. I had nothing to do with the packing. So I have a hunch that this is uh, FedEx doing probably something when they had it back um, in the back, poked into it and just kind of poked this hole in. But, I mean, it looks good. Everything appears to still be in one piece, thank God. Hard drives are uh, solid, but unfortunately you don't, want to, you don't want to rattle them around too much because they can uh, definitely get damaged. So I think my task today is to start checking these hard drives, make sure that uh, 
they're in good shape, make sure there are no bad sectors or anything, but well, at least they're here. I'm going to go ahead and put them all here and uh, count and make sure I have all the drives that I'm supposed to All right. To well, have. at least all the hard drives are there. I have not unboxed anything, so I don't know which is which. Like I said, um, I actually bought these in two different auctions, so I guess he decided to combine shipping um, to save him a little bit, which is unfortunate because I actually paid for two separate shipments. But you know what? I'm not even worried about it at this point. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and test these, make sure that... Um, they all pass, make sure there are no bad sectors. Oh, excuse me. Still getting something out of my teeth from my Chinese food. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and get to work on those. Um, I have about 8 to 10 other hard drives coming in over the next few days. So I'm going to go ahead and start building up these systems. And as you can see, the pile is growing. I actually have 12 of them right now. I went back the other day and picked up two more. And um, I should be getting uh, at least six to eight more this Friday. So that's going to be awesome. I am going to be very busy. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to work, and I'll talk all to right, you guys so I later. I all the hard drives down. This is kind of interesting. As far as I knew, they were all Western Digital drives. Um, but that's not the case. I have quite a few different ones here, and I, I thought they were all Western Digital Blues, which I do have three of them uh, are Western Digital Blues. But as you can see here, they did give me one uh, Western Digital Caviar Black, which is a very pleasant surprise. Uh, for those of you that don't know about Western Digital hard drives, the Caviar Black is the like the creme de la creme. It's the best drive, um, usually has the most cache memory, and is the most durable. So definitely going to put that in one of the i7s. Uh, also had uh, one of these generic uh, Caviar drives. Western Digital, this is one of the older ones. Uh, another Caviar Blue. They actually quite a few of the Caviar Blues. Uh, a couple of Seagate drives, actually two 750 gig Seagate drives, which are just fine. You guys know I'm a big Seagate fan. One Hitachi uh, Desk Star drive. This one is. Let me get a size on you. That's a 750. And one kind of unpleasant surprise. I have one of these drives, which is a Samsung, which. I am not a big fan of Samsung hard drives. Luckily, it's only a 640 gigabyte. Um, I've had issues with them in the past. So, all in all, not a bad deal. I think total I paid for this was uh, just under uh, $180. So, not a bad deal for all these hard drives. Now, like I said, I just got to get to work putting these in the all computers. Right, I thought this would be a good place to end the vlog. As you can see, I'm laying on the bed with Baxter. And he just saw this phone. What is it, buddy? What do you see? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are getting a nice, up-close and personal look at Mr. Baxter. He's looking at himself. <laughs> yes, you are. You're a stinker, aren't you, Baxter? All right, tubers. Well, I'm going to end the vlog here for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Continue to uh, stay tuned to my channel for more videos. And they're always about Mr. Baxter at least once in a while. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, what do we say, Baxter? Have a blessed day.